Welcome to what is a continuation of the previous study, which is based on chapter 8 in the Meditations in the Revelation. It was too long to try to cover this in one session, and at the present time now we will try to finish out uh, an examination of what is chapter 8 in the Meditations in the Revelation. And we're discussing this matter of the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and they are the seven spirits of God. Um, there is quite a likelihood that some of you will, will say, I don't get this. I don't think this is necessary. But if we are to really grasp what God is saying in these messages, to the seven churches, we need to have a better understanding of the spirit in which these messages are given. And the writer of the meditations, Rex Andrews, somehow it came to him and he was um, given wisdom, I believe, from heaven, how to identify these seven spirits with the numbers one through seven and what they mean. And uh, no doubt you've heard things like seven is the divine number for completion, six is man's number. Later on, of course, in Revelation 13, here is the number of the beast, the Antichrist, six, six, six. So numbers do have a place uh, in our understanding of the book of Revelation. We also have to realize that God took seven creation days, um, regardless of whether you think they are literal or not, 24-hour periods. The fact is there's seven, and our work week, week is based on the number seven, one through seven, seven days. Uh, there are seven colors of the rainbow, as we were talking about it uh, in the previous session. But if we will open our hearts to this, something solid, something substantial will come to you, like it has to me. So you bear with me. This will be a great deal of reading this session. I hope we can get through it in the time we have. But it's very satisfying to the soul. It, it shapes my ability to respond to the messages to the seven churches. He introduces it by saying numbers, as used in human wisdom and knowledge, are dead numbers. That means human wisdom and knowledge is developed to a great degree by the breaking asunder of things that are dead. By observation, men gain a fragmentary knowledge of things separated from God. But the knowledge which they delve deeper and deeper into is the knowledge of force or energy. And the world has gone a whoring after the knowledge of motion, force, energy. And the wisdom in that vain pursuit of knowledge appears to be the wisdom of man himself. Thus no use for, nor any need for, the wisdom of God. It's just amazing to me. Men are only uncovering what is there. No matter how vast their understanding of the universe, and they claim they understand lots, but they're just analyzing what's there. But the wisdom of God is different. It's the wisdom of life. And the wisdom of man, apart from the Spirit of God, is death. And th these operate by two opposite kinds of mind. And in the book of the Revelation, these two minds appear in the opposing powers of their workings. And behind each mind is the ruling spirit. Oh my, there's so much in that. I, I want to say um, the wisdom of God, I, I have a definition here for the wisdom of God that was given us that's so helpful. 
The wisdom of God is the understanding of the love of God as the law of life. Can you take that in? Wisdom, God's wisdom, is the understanding of the knowledge of the love of God as the law of life. That's different than man's wisdom. Perhaps you want to write that down. I'll say it again. Wisdom, God's wisdom, is the uh, understanding of the love of God as the law of life. All right. That being the case, we will expect to see that love manifested in these, this discussion of divine, the meaning of numbers from a divine point of view. That will help us. Uh, I want to add here quickly, when I was learning these things and it was starting to dawn on me the truth of it, the Lord said to me, those seven blesseds and those seven spirits of God are seven love lights. They make visible the full light of God. They're the seven colors of God's rainbow. If you get that into you, you will be able to express the love of God and explain it without it being just a fuzzy feeling. There are seven components of my love. All right, we are going to start here with this. I have to skip quite a bit. And if you order this book, uh, the Meditations in the Revelation, then you can read it for yourself in your own words. Uh, I mean, in your own time and with all the words there. But I'll start reading here. I don't want to fail to finish. The number one in divine wisdom. The use of numbers in divine wisdom, wisdom is as different from human science as eternal life is different from corruption, death, and disintegration. The number called one is, in divine wisdom, the supreme number and is the largest and also the smallest of all possible numbers. This is so because divine wisdom and its calculations deals with systems of unfolding forms which are created in the demonstration of the divine being himself. And those systems involve the unfolding and increase of all that is within that is within them. The number one includes in its fullness everything, all systems, all individuals, all living things which are turned to God and which receive life from God. There may be, or we could say should there be, 10,000 systems of the wonders of his goodness and his truth, yet all of those multiplied systems and living systems are just one system of systems. So I meditated on that. I realized that's the human body. I just looked up recently how many cells there are in the human body. Something like two trillion, I believe, maybe three trillion, I've forgotten. Every cell is a miniature factory. It's a system. You can study that yourself. But there's two trillion of them in me, and each of those cells is part of a much larger system, and we actually use the word system in describing the various functions in the human body, digestive system, respiratory system, nervous system, circulatory system. We call them systems. But when you look at me, you just say, well, there's Doug. He's just one person. But I'm composed of systems of systems. The number one in divine wisdom is just one system of systems. God is one good and one love. And that one love and that one good is the life of all the forms of all the creatures which he creates. And in his love and his eternal love fire, 
He fuses into one all things which are holy in nature or are made holy by his holy ing spirit. One as a living number is the unifying, the oneing, the oneness of all that is of God. And that oneness is also his kingdom. And then the comment is made, and I, I'm going to say this is probably as close as you and I will ever get to understanding why evil arose in the first place. Let's not suspect God of some enormous crime and offense against the human race. Listen to these words. The system of the systems of evil and destruction, that system arises as the opposite to the good and truth and love of God for the purpose of demonstrating what God is not and to make known what is destructive to all, uh, to life and the form of all creatures. When you put an object in the light, it creates a shadow. But I'll leave that alone for now. Number two, what does it mean? The number two in divine wisdom is the designation of union by opening, dividing, gain by loss, suffering, divine reproduction, and giving of oneself. In God's spirit, two are united into a one. In dead wisdom, two signifies separated items. Even though added together, such do not represent the living increase of God but only that which is framed within the limits of the knowledge of the heart and mind of fallen man. The number two in God's kingdom of life, though it may describe separate forms, nevertheless means union. We have from the mouth of Jesus this amazing heavenly wisdom knowledge. If two of you shall agree on earth is touching anything they shall ask. It shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. This agreement is only possible in the love which forgives. So much in this. It's the vital target of the adversary through all generations since Christ died and rose again and sent his spirit upon and into his children. The power of, that agreement, of the, uh, that agreement of two is in this, that where two or three are gathered together in his name, there is he in the midst. He is the midst and the union of all things with God. For he is over all things, and in him do all things consist. I'll add my own uh, concept of that, understanding of that. Uh, I've often said in marriage counseling, when you get married, it's not one plus one. It's one times one, which is still one. And if you include God in your marriage, it's one times one times one, which is still one. It's not three, all separate, and no way to connect, it's one times one times one, which is still one. It involves suffering. It involves a breaking apart in order that Jesus might be union. Uh, hard to express, but very real. What is the number three in divine wisdom? The number three in divine wisdom signifies motion and accomplishment, activity, proceeding forth, giving out the eternal law of increase. Three is also a one, as a triangle is one. Also, it can be stated that a triangle is not a triangle at all unless its three sides are closed together in one form. There is no created thing which does not have three, shall we say, qualities, namely form, 
and substance, form, and cohesion. Substance is that of which it is made. Form is its contained shape and appearance. Cohesion is the bond which holds us together. Whenever any of those qualities or factors of a living creature is destroyed, then the creature dies. We're all part of that. Substance, form, cohesion. It can even be said that there's nothing knowable to created, created beings which does not have these three qualities in one. God cannot be known to the faculties of a created being except by the oneness of these three qualities. Jesus, the true image of God, is exactly that. Substance, form, spirit. All God, God's image, God's Son. Yet Jesus loved, obeyed, prayed to, and was sent from, and raised by the dead by, and taken up into heaven by, and to the eternal being whom he named Father. And through Jesus as God's image, the Eternal Father sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, that wonderful Holy Spirit which reproduces the image of the Son of God. God as substance, form, cohesion. You have to think about that, pray about that. The efforts of human wisdom to explain the Trinity are often painful to contemplate and confusing and futile in effect. Why? Because men try to describe the eternal, unsearchable God as a trinity composed much the same as three blocks of wood fastened together. But trinity does not mean uh, three as the human science of numbers and mathematical reasoning seeks to describe it. The triunity of God is the livingness of the life giver, former, preserver. These three simple knowledges are in their rudiments part of the testimony of every believer born of the Holy Spirit. Every believer says, he loved me and gave me life. He made me a new creature, formed me a new creature. He saves, holds, sustains, preserves me the simplest child of God in uttering the testimony of his faith always declares the mystery of God, the God who reveals himself. Whew. This gets pretty heavy, doesn't it? But not in the child's view, not childish, but childlike view of God showing us seven love lights, the number three, how God forms things together to make them one. The number four. <clears throat> the number four in divine wisdom is the wisdom and kingdom of eternal life. In that wisdom and kingdom of eternal life signifies that which is founded, laid down, established. It is also the center of balance by which all things are maintained in their proper relations to each other, it can be called righteousness. It signifies also the position of creatures made by the hand of God, which have a form and entity of their own. The world and the man created from the dust of it are created on the balanced line of the universe. The balanced line is divine righteousness which is the loving justness in which God maintains the right of every creature to receive all that each needs in order to increase fully and become what it is and accomplish what it is created for. And on this little old dead earth, the creator brought forth his image I'm going to read this slow, slowly. You have to, have to take this in. For the purpose 
He brought forth his image for the purpose of maintaining divine balance between the invisible world of cause and means and the, the invisible world of cause and means and the visible world of effects. Visible and invisible refers to the powers of man as he is. That has been made so real to me. Jesus said in Luke 11, I, I, I believe it, or 7, I'm not, I've forgotten. He says to Simon, as he's eating in Simon's house, I think it was Simon's house, he says, did not he that make that which, was, which is without, meaning the outside world, did he not make also that which is within the invisible world? But that world is the world of cause and of means. It, it's, it's where ideas and motives and so on originate. It's the world of the will. And the outside world is the world of effects. And we're constantly asking ourselves, why does so-and-so do this? Why do they think this? Why this? Why that? Why did God do this? That's all part of that invisible world. And in that world, the spirit of righteousness appears. And my response to it has been this. Father, in your righteousness, put me where I belong. Fit me in, in this vast universe where everything is balanced. Oh, there's so much to say about that. The balance of the solar system, the balance of the moon and sun in relation to the earth, the balance of the solar system in the Milky Way, the balance of the Milky Way with all other galaxies, the ever-expanding universe, which no one knows really all that's there. In that is the spirit of righteousness. And unrighteousness disturbs that balance. My unrighteous behavior disturbs that balance. So I hunger and thirst for righteousness so that I can be in my place toward God and toward all others. Going on quickly. The number five, divinely speaking, signifies that which creates, makes, does, supplies, or protects, or in other words, the power which gives of itself for the making, supplying, protecting, and maintaining of others. It is the hand which performs and gives from that which it is. It turns out to be the spirit of mercy, the supply system by which God meets every need everywhere and the passion he's in to give life to all his creatures. Number five. So going on to number six. The number six in the wisdom of God concerns the purity of anything and everything which he has made. It is the purity of that which is good in his sight, which means sanctified unto him for the purpose intended in its creation. It is in the divine process of things, the area of purification in which God's sanctifying fire is in operation consuming what's unbecoming to him, which doesn't match a pure motive. Destroying of all hidden agendas. It's the system of God by which everything is made to abide and not decay. It's the end of corruption. And the number seven in divine wisdom signifies the circle of life, the holiness, peace, completeness of what we call creation. But that completeness is 
God radiating into all parts. Nothing is complete in this final sense unless it is complete in God. That's why I was saying in a marriage it should be husband, wife, and God. One times one times one. Then you're complete. You have a happy home. Completeness in God himself is himself in his own special place in the creature, filling it. He fills any creature according to what its form is. Well, we were created in the image of God, but the evil corrupting spirit of lust invaded the knowledge, consciousness, will of man and produced lust, which is false love. So we fell into the state of animals with a consciousness of the absence of true knowledge. We're left craving for knowledge, but we are trying to find it outside of God. Jesus was the knowledge of God, and the thing that we're missing is him. And when we have him, we're complete. That's an exact quote from Colossians chapter 2. You are complete in him. The number seven signifies also the seven parts which God completes as a one, as a circle is one. Seven segments, you might say, but one in its center, and all seven parts together constitute the circle. All right, that prepares us for the next lesson, which is going to amplify what does it mean, this seven-branched candlestick? What is it that lights the world? And these seven spirits of God are seven love lights which light the world and light through the church, which is the, represented by those seven candlesticks. Each angel or spirit of God reproduces Christ in the body of Christ, according to what he is of Christ. And altogether, they make a one, the body of Christ, but one in its head, just like my body is one system of systems, but controlled by the head. Oh, I want that, don't you? That's a blessedness we all need. Meditations in the Revelation by Rex Andrews is available online at evergreencenterinc.org.